How's it going, YouTube? Peter here, your Ginger Jolly Geek. Welcome back to the channel. So, you've heard all about your big announcement of Avengers Secret Wars, and you're probably stuck scratching your head thinking, what's that all about? Well, I'm here to help and explain it to you as best I can. So the first Secret Wars miniseries came out in 1984. It was a 12-issue maxi series, the first company-wide crossover, in fact. And um, this was really designed initially to sell action figures um, for, for Marvel and for um, Mattel. And some of those action figures are absolutely tremendous, well worth checking out if you're into that kind of thing. Basic premise of the story was a character called the Beyonder gathers a whole host of Marvel superheroes and villains and pits them against each other in a place called Battle World. It's a tremendous series of some fantastic action pieces, and um, particular favourite is the Hulk being buried by a mountain there. And it's really notable for a number of first appearances. So you have Jessica Carpenter as Spider Woman, Volcana, I think she was called, um, and then Titina, who is obviously a Shield villain who's going to appear shortly in the Shield TV show. show. We've also got the first appearance of the alien costume, which we all know transpires to be Venom. The series concludes with good old Doctor Doom assuming the power of the Beyonder and having a big old battle. I don't think this is going to play too much into the MCU version of Secret Wars, although we may see the Beyonder. Next, we'll have Secret Wars 2, which was a nine-issue series which came out in 1985 and follows the adventures of the Beyonder as he comes to Earth to find himself. It's crap. It's utter, utter Dirge, it's not worth reading. Cannot see them using any of this series in the MCU in the future because it's naff. Next, we'll have Secret War from 2004, which is a five issue series. Bit of an odd one, this. This is a, um, a covert mission strike team of popular heroes who go behind enemy lanes. Probably the best bit of this is we'll get some redesigns of the characters, some new costumes, and some stunning covers by Gabriel Delotto. Most notable for the introduction of Daisy, um, who is obviously Quake, who is a great character and appeared in the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. TV series for a number of seasons. Next, in 2015, we get Secret Wars. Now, I think this is probably more likely what the MCU version is going to be based on. This was a nine-issue maxi-series. This involved itself around with the concept of incursions. Thousands of different versions of Earth, same characters throughout the multiverse. And an incursion is when these different universes collide, destroying each other and wiping each other out. The lead up to the series was basically in the Avengers books and it had a number of incursions taking place with the various heroes trying to stop the incursions and it kind of came to a head where the, um, the standard Marvel Universe collided with the Ultimate Universe, Ultimate Universe being a series of books from a few years back which included characters like Ultimate Spider-Man. The conclusion of that was the Ultimate Universe was wiped out. Now, the characters awoke sometime later with no memory of the previous universe on a newly formed battle world. And it basically included lots of different stories from the past, like your um, Age of Ultron, your Marvel Zombies, um, World War Hulk, all those kind of things all mashed together. Interesting thing from this is it introduced the concept of the same character being present in multiple universes living in the same time. So for example, we had multiple versions of Thor in this series. As the series progressed, we'll find out that the architect of this new universe is none other than Doctor Doom, who's stolen the power of the Beyonder. Yes, the Beyonder from the first Secret Wars 1 and 2 series. Doom has taken the power and remodeled the universe in his image. And it kind of all comes to a head again, as it should in a Secret Wars with Doom versus Reed. The battle and finally Reed assumes the all power of the Beyonder and he recreates a universe once again, resulting in one shared universe which includes characters from the Ultimate Line, such as Miles Morales. So, what does all this mean for the MCU's version of Secret Wars? So, so far in Loki, we've seen the introduction of variants and with fractured timelines. We've had the introduction of Kang the Conqueror and we know that Kang's going to get his own Avengers movie in the future. In the Spider-Man movies, we've been introduced to the idea that the same character can exist in multiple franchises across multiple dimensions, and we've got the three Spider-Men there. This was taken a step further in the Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness series, which also introduced the Illuminati, massive characters in that 2015 Secret Wars um, series. So that, I think, leads to the conclusion that they're going to be big players in the future. We also get the introduction of fan favourite Professor X. This is important as we all know that Patrick Stewart played Professor X in the Fox franchise movies. So this is indicating that Marvel have got some kind of deal to take those characters on. 
it further explains that the same character can have multiple variations, as we see with Doctor Strange. So what does it all mean? Why does this matter? Well, I'm going to tell you. But first off, I have to say this is just my ramblings. I've got no proof of any of this, and these are just my ideas. So it might all be a load of old rubbish. But what I think we're leading to is a MCU incursion event. I think Avengers films in the future will include all of these universes and different characters colliding together. As a fan, this excites me no end because it means we'll see multiple versions of past characters. Just imagine, we've already seen brilliant versions of the Fantastic Four. Imagine this version meeting up with this ver- Oh, hang on, they're a bit crap. Never mind, forget those. How about meeting up with this ver- Oh, shit. Forget it. So how about the mutants? They're a better example. We've had some tremendous X-Men Fox movies, and I, for one, am very excited to see the continuation of some of these characters, whether that be the original X-Men from those early Fox films, or some of the next generation X-Men. I think what we're going to see is all of these different variations of characters from across the different TV and movie franchises coming together in a big head-on battle, similar to Endgame, in which they'll be fighting for the survival of their own universe. By the end of the movie, all of the universes will collide and will become one shared universe. So one shared narrative where hopefully all of these characters will be able to coexist, including things from Fox and from all the various TV shows. This will result in Marvel having access to its wide variety of characters once again. This incursion or combination of different realities will allow an easy entrance for characters that have not appeared so far in Marvel movies, such as the Fantastic Four. We might see another version of the X-Men. I, for one, would be happy to see Deadpool joining the MCU. Perhaps we'll even get Ven oh, didn't want Venom, he's crap. But more excitingly, perhaps we'll see an introduction of a big fan favourite, Miles Morales. I would love to see this version of the character in the MCU. Obviously, as I've said, this gives a nice clean way of introducing existing characters like the X-Men and Deadpool into the MCU. It also gives a great opportunity to explain the appearance of characters we haven't seen so far. For example, perhaps we'll get a Ghost Rider or even a Howard the Duck. Who knows? So that's my thoughts, guys, on where this new Avengers Secret Wars movie may take with. I know it leaves lots of questions unanswered. I'll try my best to answer those in the comments. So if you've got anything you want to ask, please do put it down below there. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you like this kind of content, please do consider subscribing to my channel and um, watching out for future videos. Okay, thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you next time. Take care.